A new book contending that drug maker Purdue Pharma knew its opioids were being widely abused early on, but still marketed them as less addictive and may have helped lead to the epidemic that we have today. Joining us right now, Barry Meyer. He's a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, New York Times reporter, author of Painkiller, an Empire of Deceit and the Origin of America's Opioid Epidemic. Um, thanks for coming in. Thank you, Andrew. So th this is the, the new information here is that the Justice Department, right? Correct had gone to Purdue and said, there's a problem here, very early on. Uh, in fact, uh, the new information is that the Justice Department had found a wealth of evidence showing that Purdue knew that these drugs were being abused, that, that knew they were, uh, people were getting addicted to them, and that effectively the company year. covered it up. This was in the uh, late 1990s. This was just in the few years after OxyContin's introduction. Not, not only covered it up, but continued to market the drug, Correct. saying that it was less addictive than other drugs like Vicodin or uh, Yeah, it, I mean, it's pretty incredible. I think the, the book tells the story of what may be the biggest corporate cover-up of our time. I know you guys have reported a lot about financial frauds and people getting ripped off, but here we have a situation of a uh, huge public health crisis being created. So the question is, can, do you think that we can say that what happened then has led to where we are today? Because hey, the, com the company will say, look, uh, we make oxycodone, but there's lots of other opioids out there now. We're just a small part of the business, if you will, right? They that were a $31 billion part of the business. Uh, the whole opioid era was launched by the aggressive and illegal marketing of OxyContin. Uh, there had been no drug prior to OxyContin that had been marketed as widely and broadly as Purdue Pharma mar marketed this drug. What, what has Purdue Pharma's response been to your book, to these, uh, this information that came from the Justice Pay no Department? attention. We're just a little part of the problem. There are a lot of other factors here. And, and, and the drug problem today is multifold. It's, it's two-pronged. How, how, how many deaths? per year are there, and how many would you say are, are linked to OxyContin? Uh, you know, there are uh, about 60,000 overdose deaths a year. I don't know how many today are linked to OxyContin, but certainly a decade ago, there were a large number of deaths and overdoses and hospitalizations that were that so involved OxyContin. a small number of the deaths. <laughs> yeah. So react to this. Uh, by the way, the CDC says that over the past two decades, more than 200,000 people have died directly <coughs> from OxyContin itself, not just uh, 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 opioids broadly. Um, this is what Purdue does say. They say, suggesting that activities that last occurred more than 16 years ago are responsible for today's complex and multifaceted opioid crisis is deeply flawed. Correct. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that Purdue marketed this drug in an aggressive and illegal manner. Okay, so the, the, the next question is, what should happen to Purdue? And by the way, where was the Justice Department throughout all of this? Let me start with that second part first. Uh, the Justice Department had an opportunity to prosecute the executives of Purdue. That was the recommendations of the prosecutors on the case. They wanted these individuals to be charged with serious crimes. But top Justice Department officials in the Bush administration essentially blocked that. And I think one of the themes I try to present in the book is that had those prosecutions gone forward, there would have been a message sent out to other drug company executives that this behavior was unacceptable and that there was a serious price why to did, be paid. Why did they choose not to? But, uh, you know, I guess they were afraid. They, they, they buckled when, you know, confronted by Purdue's, you know, high-powered legal defense team. I'm Rudy Giuliani was one of their advisors at the time. Uh, you know, that's something they have to answer to. But certainly the prosecutors on the case recommended that there be very serious felonies be brought, you know, be brought against the, uh, the executives. Did, did, if you just took the, it in pill form, was it a better way of treating, of, of pain management? And then did people figure out, that, what, what do you do, inject it or it snort it? Or uh, well, it? people figured out they could crush it and snort did, did, it now, very did quickly. Did knew they could... Did, 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 Yes. Was they got the pill itself a better way to manage uh, pain? You know, or? it was being promoted that way, was that, but basically that it was just a long-lasting form of Vicodin or Percocet. Okay. Yeah. But the, and then it quickly people found out you could crush it and snore it. Exactly. Did it, other manufacturers ever get notice from the Justice Department or anybody else about the same kind of claims that, that had been made to Purdue? 
you know, the Justice Department has uh, not gone after these companies right. sort of w with any great vigor. Uh, and, you know, part of the tragedy here is that when they didn't go after Purdue, it was kind of a green light for everybody else to kind of go wild. Right. Um, where do you think we are in terms of the administration has talked a lot about the opioid crisis right. and what it wants to do? Um, what, what, what is the state of play? You know, I think it's very important. I mean, you have an audience of, of business people and executives who can play a tremendous role in helping to staunch this epidemic by making sure that people who are in pain are treated with, you know, the best possible treatments for pain, not simply pain pills, you know. They can make sure that the companies that provide insurance to their employees give them far better pain treatments. Okay. Barry Meyer, uh, the book is Painkiller. Uh, it is uh, eye-opening, and uh, go take a look at it. Appreciate it. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.